Okay, this is the start of Teddy's graduation instructional training videos. We have had so much fun working with little Teddy. He is the cutest little thing and everyone who meets him asks if he is even real. He is that adorable. So we are going to miss him like crazy, um, but we're also really excited to pass the torch to you in terms of his training and have you see all the progress that he has made. So as you know, there is no such thing as a quick fix in dog training. It really is a commitment for the duration of their lifetime. Just like people, they are constantly growing and learning and evolving. Um, so this is not the end of the road, but especially in these first 18 months, they're going through a lot of different stages of development. Um, so it's really important just to stay super consistent and on top of the training, and then just understand that it will be normal to have some periods of regression or for new behaviors to emerge as he gets older. Um, specifically, between six and nine months, they start to enter into what I very lovingly call the teenage phase. And just like people and their teenage stage of development, it's a little normal for them to test boundaries or they can become more destructive, um, things of that nature. And just keep in mind that this is all natural and normal for them. It is just part of the dog experience. Um, but when we stay really consistent and we set a solid foundation ahead of that period, it's so much easier to redirect unwanted behaviors and then reinforce the good ones. So just keep that in mind. Now, the purpose of these videos is to walk you through what he's learned, what the commands mean, etc. But we also have a written form of this too. It's not as specific to Teddy, but please flip through that graduation notebook and you'll find all kinds of information and resources as well. If you're watching this within the first week of training um, and you haven't read the first week guide, it's on like the maybe the third page of the grad notebook. It's after the virtual support QR code. I think after the hand signals and marking with yes, there's um, a week one outline. Make sure you read that as a good starting point um, and continue from there. But the purpose of these videos, again, is just to kind of teach you and have you watch him kind of do it in action, just to make it a little bit easier. All right, this first one, we're just gonna dive into the hand signals that we use, and then I'll also go over how to get in touch for virtual support. So as far as hand signals, for sit and for settle, we use a fist. They share this hand signal just because settle is basically asking him to hold a sit. What we're really looking for is impulse control. So when a puppy is really, really excited and hyped up, I don't necessarily need just a simple sit. I want them to settle. I want them to take a beat. I want them to calm down a little bit and then we can re-engage. So um, sit, I'll mark yes as soon as his butt hits the ground for settle. I will wait a few beats and then mark yes. And then we typically will reward that with petting um, or going back to play or whatever the case may be. So if he's jumping on us, um, we will reward settle with um, attention. Usually they're jumping on us for attention. If he's playing and just being too crazy, then we'll go back to play. All right. So and then down is in lay down. We just simply point to the ground. So keep that in mind. Now, when we say down, what we're asking him to do is lay down. A common mistake we see is when people are telling their dog what we would use as off, which means, you know, don't jump on me, don't bark, etc. cetera. Um, they accidentally use down when they're jumping. We don't want to do that. Down means lay down. So just keep that in mind. Um, it'll take some practice, but it will become more natural over time. And then for place, we are pointing to whatever it is we are using as place. We're in a full splute. Um, so we're gonna just point really close to it. We wouldn't wanna point from across the yard or across the room. When we say place, we wanna be really close to it. And then if it's the first time we're introducing something brand new as place, what we'll do is kind of guide the pup on and off of that thing first so they understand how to get on and off really confidently and then it can become place. And then um, touch is two fingers out at a height. Yes, good boy. At a height, he can comfortably reach. So you're going to have to bend over for this one. The goal is that he's going to tap his nose against your two fingers as a way to get his attention and focus back on you. Um, but we do not want him to have to jump up to tap his nose against your two fingers. So you need to get nice and low. Teddy, touch. What are you smelling? Teddy, touch. Dear. Yes, good boy. Good job. They were in my yard, not Alex's yard. So there's a lot of new smells. It's very exciting and distracting. 
All right, and then for stay, it is just a palm out. So we're gonna use that in a variety of scenarios, of course, too, um, but just make sure that he can see it. Like most dogs, he's most responsive to hand signals. Um, they communicate through body language, which is why that's so effective. Um, they also, of course, communicate by tones of barking, and there's different iterations of barking that mean different things to them. So um, uh, one other thing I like to go over with this video, too, is just keep in mind your energy or tone of voice. Um, when owners are getting stressed out, maybe a dog is pulling on a leash or they're barking at another dog, it's really easy to get embarrassed and worked up. It happens to the best of us. Um, even in training, if a dog is reactive or something like that, we it, it can be really hard to control the emotional state as you're working through that. But it's really, really important that we stay confident and calm. And then it's also really important that when we give a command, we speak really clearly. We do not need to yell. We don't need to sound super harsh, but typically a proper sit is gonna work better than sit. Um, just because although dogs do respond to baby talk and it's really nice, um, they don't understand the English language, right? They understand our tone of voice. So if we're saying you're such a good boy, oh my goodness, we love you. He'll love it. He's going to eat it up. That's wonderful. I do talk to my own dogs like that too. But when it's time to give him a command and I'm going to have an expectation that he's going to follow through, I need to set him up for success. So that's where we are going to say, Teddy, touch. Yes. Teddy, sit. Yes. Good boy. So you just want to speak clearly and make sure that there is an emphasis on the actual command. That way he understands what you're saying. Okay. If you have questions about any of that, whether it's hand signals um, or tone of voice or kind of keeping energy in check and what all that means, um, please do not hesitate to reach out. That is what our virtual support program is here for. So what virtual support means is you get a full month of virtual training after the program. So this is actually not the end of our program together. Now you and I get to meet virtually over the phone or over a video call just for check-ins to make sure he is continuing to make progress, that he's listening, that everyone in the household is really confident and comfortable continuing the work. So if you have questions, what you'll do is you will schedule a virtual support call using the QR code in the graduation notebook, or it's also in the same email that contains these video links. Oh, we've got the zoomies. Um, or it's also on our website, or you can do it in the app. We just ask that when you book virtual support, please let us know whether you prefer audio or video call. If you don't specify, it is just going to be an audio call, just because not everyone is super comfortable being on Zoom. Um, so I'm not gonna force them to do that. Sometimes people step out at work or whatever and take a virtual support call. That's completely fine. Um, you don't have to be on video, but um, if you wanna be, I'm always more than happy to be. I will send a link and block my schedule so that we can be on Zoom. Um, but also, if you'll tell us what you wanna discuss, even if it's just like, hey, generic check-in, there does not have, there doesn't need to be a specific reason. Um, we're more than happy just to connect anyway. That's our that's our preference. But um, if there is something specific, say he's having trouble with leash work, for example, please put that in there. And then what I'll request for specifically leash work, typically I'll request a video ahead of time, or I'll say, hey, rather than doing a Zoom call, would it be okay if you have, if you have an iPhone? Can I FaceTime you for my personal number while you're on your walk? Um, and then I can be along for the walk. You don't even have to be on camera. It could just be Teddy on camera. And then that way I can see kind of exactly what you're doing. I will say it does work best if you have a second person on the walk with you, um, unless that totally changes how he does on the walk, just so I can see you with him fully interacting. But even if I can just see him, it's still super, super helpful just to give me insight. And then I can kind of make a really um, specific recommendation from there. But the reason we want you to specify is just so if we need more information to give you really accurate advice, we can do that. There is really no one size fits all in dog training. And it comes down to so many little factors or nuances in body language and things like that. And sometimes it is just easier to see on video. Okay. So that is virtual support. Again, please let us know if you have questions or if you just want to update us. Um, if you have quick questions, then you can also email virtual support at puppypreparatory.com. We have multiple trainers in that inbox. So we try to get back to that very quickly. Um, sometimes that's faster than emailing Jamie at Puppy Preparatory or even info at Puppy Preparatory, um, just because there's only a couple of us in the info at um, and it's more admin related. And then for my personal inbox, if I'm in a training session with a dog or connecting with another trainer and supporting them, um, I won't be able to respond quite as quickly as our virtual trainer who is in that alumni support and she can get back to you right away. So um, if you have quick questions, email us or you can text us, but just keep in mind that 
most of the time I'm going to ask to hop on a call. And that's simply because I typically have questions. If you have a question for me, I usually will say, okay, give me more insight into X just because I don't want to give you advice without it, like understanding the full picture. I want to make sure the tips I'm giving you are really specific to the situation. So calls are usually better, but, um, email and tech support is available as well. Um, and then one other thing to mention, if there is ever a situation where you don't see a time available that you need for virtual support, please, please, please let me know, send me a text, send us an email, um, and we will make it happen outside of those times. We have virtual support until 6 30 PM most days. Um, but sometimes there is, and we don't have it on the weekends, but if there's ever anything urgent, like you're seeing a lot of regression with something and you don't understand, we'd rather address it right away. So, um, especially for things that really suck suddenly pop up or initial regression or things like that, um, email me or text me and we will set up a separate time outside of virtual support. I will do weekends. I'll do late nights, whatever you need. So, um, feel free to, to use that as well. All right. Thank you so much. And we can't wait to hear all about how Teddy is doing at home.